G'day guys, we've got a physics question today. Specifically, we're talking about static equilibrium. Now, we've got three forces, F1, F2, and F3, act on a body that remains in equilibrium. F1 has a magnitude of 400 newtons. The angle between the directions of F1 and F2 is 150 degrees. Between F1 and F3 is 135 degrees, and between F2 and F3 is 75 degrees. Determine the magnitudes of F2 and F3, rounding your answers to the nearest whole number. Okay, so what I would do first, guys, whenever I'm considering a problem like this, is I'm going to draw a picture. So what I've done is, before I started the video, I just drew out this little picture here. It doesn't have to be amazing, but yeah, it just helps you visualize the problem. So when we're doing static equilibrium problems, guys, most of the working out or most of the problem solving is going to be based around the fact that the sum of the forces in each of the directions which we have available to us is going to equal zero. So in this example, guys, we're dealing in two dimensions. So we're going to have to assume that the sum of the forces in the y direction, so the force down of 400, is exactly equal to the force up provided by F3 and F2. On the other hand, the force in the x direction, or the x-axis, has to also be zero. So the force provided to the right by F3 is going to have to be equal and opposite to the force provided by the to the left of F2. So to do this, guys, what I'm going to first do is I'm going to just finish off drawing these triangles here. So I'm just going to get a different colour. I'm just going to draw the bottom of these triangles and write in my angles. So I've got 135 there. I know that this angle here is going to be 45 degrees. And this angle here is going to be 30 degrees. Okay, guys, and then moving forward, what we're going to do is we're going to call the uh, force F2. We'll call that X just to make things easier for ourselves. And the force F3, we're going to call that Y. Cool. So to start with, guys, let's just work on our Y-axis directions. So we know that the sum of the forces in the Y direction have to equal zero. So as a result, what we can say is that the downwards force, 400 newtons, has to be equal to the upwards forces provided by F2 and F3. So the upward force provided by F2 is going to be the force of F2, so X, and the component of that force in the vertical direction. So that's going to be X times the cosine, because it's the adjacent side here, of 30. And similarly, with F3 or Y, we're going to add the component of that vector in the vertical direction. So Y times the cosine of 45. Cool. So now we've got a relationship between the 400 newtons going down and F2 and F3 going up. Like in the same sort of vein, guys, we're going to talk about our horizontal vectors. And all we're going to do now is, because it's in static equilibrium, we also know that the sum of the forces in the x direction are also equal to zero. So as a result, we can say that the component of F2 in the horizontal direction is going to have to be equal to the component of F3 in the horizontal direction. So the component of the F F2 in the horizontal direction is going to be equal to x, now this is the opposite side now, times the sine of 30 degrees, and that's going to have to be equal to y times the sine of 45 degrees. Okay, so from here, guys, I'm going to evaluate each of my trigonometric ratios. So in the first formula, I'm still going to have my 400. is going to be equal to x times the cosine of 30, which is square root 3 on 2. So x times the square root of 3 on 2 plus y times the cosine of 45. Now the cosine of 45 is 1 on root 2. So that's going to be plus y on the square root of 2. Cool. Now with the second formula, we've got x times the sine of 30. So we know that the sine of 30 is a half. So we're going to just say x over 2 is going to have to be equal to y times the sine of 45, which is just 1 on root 2 again. So we've got y on root 2 
Now, hopefully, guys, from here, you'll be able to notice that we've got y on root 2 in the first formula. We've got y on root 2 in the second formula. So we can just use a substitution here to get our first formula strictly in terms of x. So now I'm going to be left with 400 is equal to x times the square root of 3 on 2 plus x on 2. Now we can put them both over 2 and take the 2 over the other side. And we're going to have 800 is equal to, and I'm going to factorise by x and then take the root 3 plus 1 to the other side. Cool. And you find if you stick that in a calculator, guys, you will get 292.82 or 293 newtons, which is equal to F2. Cool. So we can then work out F3 because I'm going to just use this second formula. Take the root 2 over the other side. So I'm going to have Y is equal to x times the square root of 2 over 2 and I'm going to substitute the value for f2 that I've just recently worked out into this formula and I find that y is equal to 207 newtons and that's also equal to f3 so for the examiners, guys, we probably want to underline where our solutions are. So there's F2 and there's F3. Okay, so there you have it, guys. Now, if I had to give you one thing that you could take away from this video is that when you have static equilibrium problems, is that the solution will come by appreciating the fact that the sum of the forces or the torques or the turning effects in each of the directions that you have available to you will equal zero, like we've got written here on the left-hand side. So it's either going to be in two dimensions, x and y, or three dimensions, x, y, and z, or if you've got a torque, it'll have like a clockwise and anti-clockwise torque vectors that you'll have available to you. And it's making sure that you have sets of equations that satisfy these particular conditions, and then using them to solve for unknowns. That's basically the rule of thumb on how you're going to solve most of these static equilibrium problems. So I hope the video helped guys. If it did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel guys. I put out new videos all the time. And if you had any problems with any of the content that I mentioned in this video, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. Also guys, if you have any problems with any of physics homework or any of your exam study that's to do with physics, please also don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. I'm always looking for new ideas to base new videos on. So guys, I hope the video did help. Just remember that with any physics problems like this, the only way to get better at them is practice, practice, practice. Keep banging your head against the wall. Eventually the wall will fall down. But just make sure, guys, whilst you're banging your head against the wall, you just continue to enjoy your physics.